What's going on guys, Victor here. And today we are not saltwater fishing because it is insanely rough in the ocean right now. So instead of sitting at home, Brick and I decided to do some freshwater fishing. And one thing that I've been wanting to do for a long time is wait for that car to go by. But no, seriously, one thing I've been wanting to do is expand the species we have on the channel and the catch clean cooks. So today we're after peacock bass. Rick and I came up to this bridge and started throwing uh, bread in. We saw all these little bluegills and stuff come up and then two decent sized peacocks, peacocks came up. So what we're gonna do is we've got a bucket full of live shiners and live shiners are like gold for fresh water. Got myself a little live shiner, a size one beak hook, must add beak hook. And I bet you this bait is gonna be in the water all of five seconds before it gets eaten. All right guys, we're hooked up on the little bread ball. I think I got an Oscar on. Brick, have been, Brick and I have been seeing these exotic looking fish. And I don't do a whole lot of freshwater fishing, so I'm not sure. Oh, it's a main cichlid. I've been wanting to do a catch and cook with one of these two. All right, check this fish out. This is a main cichlid, highly invasive. Um, peacocks, peacock bass were actually put here by the state to control species like this. And I know these are good. People refer to them as freshwater snapper. And if you look at them, they kind of look like a snapper. Very beautiful. And I think that's the fish that we've been seeing. So we're gonna harvest these guys, harvest this guy and there's no bag limit on this because they are invasive. I got them. No, no, no. What is it? Oh, that's an Oscar. That's a big Oscar, bro. All right, guys, I am almost 99% sure this is an Oscar. I've never caught one. I've never seen one. I don't do a whole lot of freshwater fishing, but I've always wanted to catch one. I've always wanted to eat one. And Brookie got to catch one, and we're both going to eat it. Very similar size to the main cichlid that we just caught, but this guy's also invasive. I caught him on a... Um... Uh, on a live shiner. I did see a really big peacock too, bigger than the ones that you saw earlier. And I thought the peacock was gonna go for it and then this guy ate him. There's some fish, we're fishing this like little dead end by this bridge right here. And there's some fish like out in the shadows, but everything seems to be super spooky. So we're kind of chumming them up with the bread balls and uh, we're just taking it all in, enjoying this nice day. And let's see what else, what other species we can get. Oh yeah. Peacock. Peacock. Oh. We have two. Oh, look at how sick that is. We had two pe peacocks sitting up there by that little yellow peck. Oh, did you see the yep, follower? Yep. How cool is that? One followed it right up. Yeah, baby. Check that out. Bricky got a peacock. I got a peacock. This is going to be. For me at least. Look at how that thing is barely hooked. Tiny hook. They're being super, super skittish today. This one was on a live shiner. You know what I'm gonna do for my catch and cook? We got an Oscar, we got a main cichlid, and we got a peacock. I think it'd be really cool to compare the three. We got ourselves another main cichlid. So we've caught one already earlier today. And this is the second one. These are both good size. That's like a keeper mangrove snapper. It really looks like the freshwater snapper of the canals. So these little guys are super plentiful, schooled up fish. They really do resemble snapper and they can literally be found. If you guys want to teach your kids to fish or your grandpa, your grandma, your wife or whatever, Florida, the cool thing about it is we have so much freshwater, especially in South Florida, canals, lakes, streams, everything there's literally fishing opportunities everywhere and i guarantee you this guy's going to taste super tasty and these can be found almost anywhere and i caught him on a piece of bread i was over there brick was over there talking to our friends tj and shelby so let's see if we could get some more this is the last spot we checked out this little pipe right here side of the road check it out beautiful peacock right there i know this video is kind of all over the place there's so many species we've tried so many different things try to catch tilapia earlier that was an epic fail Hey, look, hook came out. Hold them sideways. How pretty. 
So Shelby right there, she caught a really big one earlier. This is about the average size you get. It's about a pound, pound and a half. And they have that false eye on their tail. It's just absolutely beautiful. We're gonna get, we're gonna let this guy go because we have plenty of peacocks already in the core. <laughs> he like clamped onto my thumb. Nice job, guys. Hey, I man, you're making my uh, fish look small. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Shelby literally just caught a crappie. That is, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I did not expect that. In wow. Here. You gotta eat that. Yeah. yeah. That, that's <laughs> totally going in the pool. That's food you'll eat that? He's so that's pretty food. too. <laughs> Honestly, this is my first crappie I've ever caught. I don't think I've ever caught one. Yeah. I've that's a nice one. one too. That's yeah. a big one. Yeah. The colors are not pretty on them. Right here. Cool. Is that on a white shiner too? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, look, it's still on our line. No way. Well, good job, Shelby. Thank you. Are you going to donate him to the cooler? Yes. Now, here's something you don't see often at a fillet table. This big old peacock bass. We just got to take a second to appreciate this thing. Look at how beautiful it is. This is, aside from a dolphin, dorado, mahi-mahi, I think it's probably the coolest looking fish we have in Florida. And I can see why people spend so much time and money chasing these things. Now the ones we get in Florida are not as big as the ones you uh, people get in South and Central America and Brazil. I've already filleted the main, the Mayan cichlid, as well as the Oscar. I'll show you guys those fillets in a second. Now let's go ahead and fillet this peacock bass. So what I'm going to do is find the soft part of the head meat, go from the head down around the pec fin to the belly, just like that. I'm going to take the tip of our knife and just outline this fish all the way from head to tail. Nice sharp dexter, makes it very easy. Okay, and then I like to go from the tail back up towards the head along the fish's spine. tell you right now this is like no freshwater fish I've ever seen in terms of the fillet absolutely beautiful I lift this uh, flap of head meat up we're gonna go over this rib cage break through the pin bones other side of the backbone point the tip of your knife down look at that I think it looks just like a snapper. Look at that. It looks beautiful. Let's skin them and see what the bloodline looks like. I always like to judge a fish by how big its bloodline is too. Because fish with big bloodlines often get a bad rap. Very firm, doesn't smell whatsoever, not too big of a bloodline. So only thing we got left to do is remove the pin bones, which lie from the head half towards the tail half along the bloodline. Take your knife, go on both sides of the pin bones, lift this up, and there you go. There's your boneless, skinless peacock filet. I am very excited to try this. That's the Oscar, and then this is the Mayan cichlid. Now take a look at that difference in color. Very white, the Mayan's very yellow, and actually this color reminds me of dolphin, if anything, of mahi. Mahi has that kind of off-white color. So if you look at the backside of the bloodlines, bloodlines of fish are one of the reasons people consider trash fish trash fish. If they have a really big bloodline, like a catfish does, like we did in the other, in uh, the video I did last week, they have a massive bloodline that extends from the edge of the fillet to the edge of the fillet, and it's very thick. All three of these fish have very small bloodlines. We'll catch you guys in the kitchen. We're gonna cook them up, and I'm very excited to see what Shelby, TJ, and Mike have to say. We have three guests coming over, and let's get to it. Funny thing about the main cichlid, Mayan cichlid, 
That's Mayan. That's Mayan. Look at the color difference of those two fillets. And Brooke made a good point. We actually caught the mines in three different bodies of water, three different canals, lakes, and every single one has a slightly different tint. I can see why a lot of people don't want to eat freshwater fish. As long as you're fishing a body of water that's intertwined with other bodies of water and that's got good flow, like I would never eat a fish out of freshwater that was stagnant. But all the bodies of water we fished were in canals connected in big systems, you know, so it's always moving. And most of the freshwater we have east comes from the Everglades and, and west and all those canals are connected. So it's not like the water's ever really sitting there. Unless you're on some golf course pond or something, then I could see how that's not connected at all. So I have my fillets coated in olive oil. If you guys have never had this stuff right here, rice or onion rice peel off, which is an actual rice, I don't think. It is so good. This is easily, this smell right here of the browning of the butter and the rice peel off is like my top five smells of, of all time. It is so good. So next time you guys are making a fish dinner, pick that up at your local grocery store. You will not regret it. Fish is covered in olive oil. So check this out. If you guys know Brooke and I, this is the blackened seasoning we always swear by. But as you guys know me, I'm always trying to learn how to do things on my own. So look at this. That's Chef Vic's homemade blackened seasoning. That's Chef Paul's. I'm not gonna say it's as good, but it's good. We had it the other day on some chicken breast and it's all about proportions. So if you guys ever wanna make your own, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, thyme, salt, black pepper, and you can put in chili powder if you want, you can put in celery salt, you can, you know, add a little different things to give it a little kick or not a kick. Like, you can add more cayenne. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna sprinkle my uh, blackened seasoning on, and if we don't have enough, then we will add some of Chef Paul's. We have TJ, Shelby, and Mike. My goal today to get this out of the bottle. <laughs> My goal today, I don't think they eat a lot of freshwater fish. Um, I really hope they're gonna like it and I hope the whole catch and cook thing on this channel is what? No such thing as trash fish, just tra trash cooks. And starting the cooking process doesn't start in the kitchen. It starts, as soon as you catch that fish, get it on ice, bleed it if it's a fish that needs to be bled, keep it iced properly, trim off the bloodline, whatever you have to do, that is how you make fish taste good. Not just the seasonings you put on it, it starts well before the kitchen. Okay, so we got the outdoor burner on. This is the Camp Chef Sidekick. You guys have been seeing me cook a ton of stuff on this, on the walk and everything. Cooking on gas is a huge game changer. Everything gets so hot so fast. So we got medium high heat. We got a nonstick pan, we're gonna add some olive oil. We're gonna add the peacock first. Gonna give him a little flip. And that's the blackening we're looking for. Right there. Textbook black. Peacock, right there. Turns white just like every other fish when you eat it. <laughs> if you, if, if I had to bet my life right now, like, okay, not my life, but like $500, cannot tell you that this came from fresh water. At all. Okay, try the other At one. At all. Peacock is phenomenal. I'm not sure if this is Oscar or mine. Mmm. <laughs> Could never tell you it swam in freshwater. Very similar to Yellowtail, which is a very flaky, kind of mushier fish, but both excellent. Not muddy whatsoever. And we've eaten fish before that tasted kind of muddy. Snakehead has tasted muddy to us before. These two fish, whatever I had, very good. And if you don't like it, don't feel 
Don't feel shy about saying it. The peacock is good. It doesn't really taste like... Oh, it just tastes like what you cook it in. Mm -hmm. It just tastes like fish. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like money or fishing. What are you thinking down there, Mike? It's amazing. I uh, was not expecting that. I was kind of weary myself, but... That is soft like a yellow tail. This would mm -hmm. trick me. Definitely. TJ? <laughs> so far, the peacock, pretty much very similar to snapper. And I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna go for it. Different. It's definitely softer. It still tastes just as good as anything else. There we go. So. There we go. It's really good, honestly. <laughs> it does have the texture of like yellowtail. Yeah, it does. I feel like I kind of have two different fish on my plate. I mean, three different. Whatever this thing was, was better than the peacock. <laughs> really? Yeah. Maybe you had the Oscar then, because the Oscar was the whitest flesh. Good job. Okay, I have one question for everyone. Does anything taste remotely bad? No. No. Mm. no. Does anything no. taste muddy? No. 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 All right, you guys passed the test. <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I think it is so cool that as a fisherman in Florida, if it's rough, you can go inshore. If it's calm, you can go offshore. There are so many opportunities knocking at your door as a fisherman in Florida that there's really like no excuse ever to stay inside and to not eat fresh fish and to not tackle new fisheries and learn new things. There's literally limitless possibilities and I'm so beyond thankful that you guys allow me to be able to do this for a living and to try new things and everything. And you know, Florida is so diverse in its fisheries from the freshwater to the salt water. And that's what I've been telling you guys is this year, especially I want to show you guys all of it. There's so many species I still want to tackle. And if you guys, um, if you think of something that you want to see on the channel, go ahead and comment below. I do have shark catching cup coming up, all sorts of other species that I want to keep on the down low so nobody does it before us. That's it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.